Check, 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 one, two, one. Check, check, one, two. Check, one, two, one, two. Check, one, two. All right. I'll just wait a one or two minutes. eight o'clock welcome thank you for tuning in my name is Mason and I'm excited that you wanted to hear about my first album and hear some songs and I just thought it'd be a fun thing to do on a Sunday night in November so let me think um, I guess where I would start I just you know just I might tell a little bit about the story about how this record came to be um, I grew up in Pittsburgh and then moved to Minnesota when I was 19 years old and you know kind of because i i love the music scene in minnesota i was i was sub obsessed with prince uh, i love the jayhawks the replacements and so i came to minnesota and i thought you know i'm gonna come in there and i'm gonna be able to like play a bunch of shows and then what happened was is i couldn't get any shows and <clears throat> for about two or three years all i could get was a coffee shop gig um which was great but it was it was just sort of like every week I, or every month i'd play a sh show at this place called jitters and Finally, I was at turned 21, and I was like, man, this isn't really working out. Like, I thought I was going to be able to, you know, play rock clubs or get a record deal or something. And so I, I went to a place, um, it was called Resources and Counseling for the Arts. And for me, that was like, you know, as a high school dropout and somebody that doesn't like authority and, and things, I was like, man, I'm really like, I must really need help to go to this place. So it actually went really good. I went to this place, Resources and Counseling for the Arts. It was in St. Paul. And I brought a backpack full of tapes, cassette tapes of, of my songs. And I met with this guy named Chris Osgood. And he was in a punk band called the Suicide Commandos. It was like a seminal Minneapolis punk band, um, you know, when he was younger. And we sat down and I told him, like, you know, I'm having trouble, like, hearing my songs. And I, and I dumped out this, these cassettes on the table. And I was like, do you have a tape player? And he's like, yeah, I can find a tape player somewhere. This is in the 90s. And... Uh, so he, he, he like, first of all, he's like, get, got a tape player together. And I put one tape in. And I was like, this is one of my songs. And I pulled it out and I got another tape and put it in there. And he was like, dude, I'm going to stop you right there. Like, this is not going to do it for you. Like, you need to get your shit together big time. So I was like, okay, I don't even know what that means. And he was like, why don't you make a CD? And then when you make a CD of some kind of like a demo of like what you think is your central strength and your, and your sound, you can come back in here and we'll actually have a real meeting. I can help you. But until you do that, I can't help you. And I was like, okay. And I felt super dejected because I was totally broke. I was working at restaurants at the time. And, and I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to make a CD. Cause like, to me, it was like, that'd be like, why don't you make a moon rover or something? Like it was completely, it was like seemed impossible. So I saved up all this money for about a year and I thought, well, maybe I'll get like some really old gear, like some analog um, tape machine or something and just make like a really simple, recording that like highlights just maybe you know acoustic guitar and vo voice and so I saved up and I got this old four track that was actually when I bought it it was too heavy to carry home and I had to like have somebody come pick me up it was like this giant machine like I was so excited I finally saved up the money to move it and I couldn't even get it off the off the uh out of the store so like I'd get help with that um and I started trying to figure out a way to record this record and and you know I felt like the cheapest way I could do it was I got one mic and I just decided to play all the instruments myself. And then I couldn't figure out a place where I could actually record it because I lived in an apartment. So like you can't play very loud in an apartment. So I'm like, okay, well, I had one friend who said, hey man, in my apartment building, there's these storage spaces in the basement that are like little troughs. They look like little, you know, anybody that's been in an apartment building in Minneapolis knows in the very basement, there's like little troughs where you can keep like your boogie boards or your like snowblower or something so he's like maybe we can like hide you in there somewhere and you can record your records so like i actually tried that and it was so depressing in there that it like <laughs> it sounded like i couldn't play a drum kit i had like this little tabla and i, I played like some songs and and then the, the the songs just sounded miserable like so i was like oh this, this is never gonna work i'm never gonna be able to make the cd so then out of nowhere this guy that i worked with got in touch with me and said i have this house and it's on lake street in minneapolis and I need a roommate. 
And I was like, okay. And he invited me to come over and it was like this big like duplex with a big wooden dining room and there's nothing in it. And he's like, you can, you know, put up all your instruments in the middle right here. I'm like, can I put a drum set right where the dining room table would be? And he goes, totally. I'd love that. And he's like, he goes, uh, you know, you can move in right away. So I was like, oh my God, thank you. So like I moved in right away and, and got to work on this recording. And, um, the, the original song, I was, I'm going to play the first song on this, on this, on this record, but the original song was actually the light part two, which, you know, I ended up releasing on, um, a, a record later called Use Your Voice. But when I was thinking about what would be a, you know, really good way to open this record or like when Chris Osgood was like, why don't you put your strengths forward? I was like, well, why don't we put the voice first? And I just heard this record, Kindness of the World by Joe Henry, and he starts with his voice. And I thought that's a cool idea. Like, why don't we just introduce what I do with my voice first? And I should enter, enter it with a, you know, welcoming instead of just coming in with like some sort of depressing thing or something that's like, I hate everybody, or I'm so broke I can't make a CD. Why don't you say, like, make yourself at home? And so the song was inspired by the house I was living in. It had totally brown water in it. If anybody knows Minneapolis, it was, like, right by where Bryant Lake Bowl is. The house isn't there anymore. It got moved, actually. Like, one day, right after I finished this record, people came and moved the house, like, on these giant trucks somewhere into a different neighborhood, and I had to move out. So it was the house was there for just as long as it needed to be. And so, this is how my first album began. It's a song called Nothing. Make yourself at home, cause I'm going out Across the street to get us some water Cause this water's brown And I'm so embarrassed to have you here But I want you around Usually I'd sing or play you my guitar But I know it won't get very far with you Cause you like music that makes you move Mine has a groove, but there's nothing I can prove Please know what I mean when I say nothing When I say nothing When I say nothing When I say Things that I buy and things that I think Haven't made this a better place to be Drugs that I try and drinks that I drink haven't made this a better place to be It's still just a room with the drums in the middle A couch along the wall that works as my bed I still have a phone that rings all day I still have things I wish I would have said Please know what I mean when I say nothing When I say nothing When I say nothing I say This whole thing's been hard on me It breaks my heart Do you know what that means? And my new place seems strange to me It breaks my heart To know what that means It means nothing to make yourself at home I'm going out Across the street To get us some water Cause this water's brown And I'm so embarrassed To have you here But I want you around Usually I'd sing Or play you my guitar But I know it won't get very far With you Cause you like music It makes you move And mine has a groove But there's nothing I can prove Please know what I mean when I say nothing, when I say nothing, when I say nothing, when I say this whole thing's been hard on me, it breaks my heart, do you know what that means? My new place seems strange to me It breaks my heart Do you know what that means? It means nothing So that was the first song. And, you know, <clears throat> the second song, let me think. So the second song is a song called Butterfly. And for that song, I remember I was, I was, uh, I was messing around with the riff. <laughs> And my roommate, who invited me to live with him, had an amp. And I never had amps because I was mostly playing acoustic guitar. And 
he was like, you can use that if you want. And I plugged it in and I got this crazy sound to go like, dun, 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 dun. and I was like, oh, that's cool. So like, you know, just using what was around me because I was using a four track and I, I'm like not technically minded at all. So what I was trying to do with that record is just use the most basic instruments. Like if the guitar sounds good, just use one mic, it'll sound okay. You don't have to like mess with it or add effects and stuff. And for those of you don't, that don't know what a four track, what it looks like, what I'm talking about, I found these, these, these are the actual tapes. And I don't have the machine anymore, but like on the back of this one, it says Godless, California, a song called Last Day of October, which I can barely remember, uh, a song called Ease Your Mind. And it says October, November 1997, so 23 years ago. And then the tapes look like this, and then they sprawl out everywhere. And, and I try to put them on the reels with a pen because I didn't know how you're supposed to get them hooked up there. And so that's what that looked like. Let's see what's on the back of these other ones really quick. This one says, Butterfly, 1997, Darkness Between the Fireflies, and Nothing, October 1997. So those four were all in a row. And then I use one mic, and this is the mic. I found this. So I put this one, you know, as I moved around the room, I, it's a AKG mic. And, um, you know, I put it in front of the drum set, then I play the drums. Then I put it in front of the bass, then I play the bass. Then I put it in front of the guitar, play the guitar, then I'd sing into it. So... This next song is Butterfly. Actually, when I recorded Butterfly on that tape, I think it ended up being like a seven minute song. There was like guitar solos and all this crazy stuff. And then when I was listening back to it, I was like, that's too long. Nobody needs to hear it something that long. So I cut it down to like pretty short, actually. Um, maybe too short. But this is the song I actually knew that something was happening when I was, when I first put out this demo, I'd be playing college shows. And I remember one college show, these kids all invited me back to their dorm. And then I, they wanted me to play Butterfly in their dorm room while like 50 kids came in the room and I just kept playing Butterfly over and they were just cheering and cheering and cheering. I was like, what the fuck is happening right now? So anyways, here's Butterfly. I'm all dressed up in your words today. Do you think about me? Or do you think about me? And if it comes down, it's still about the sweet little things you say. After all that I've run from, where the fuck did you come from? Butterfly, maybe I still have my doubts about you, cuz butterfly, cuz I can't find nothing bad about you, eh? Butterfly, you mess me up, you make my heart double beat, eh? Butterfly, I don't know how did you got inside of me But you're in there now, oh you're in there now, you're in there now You made me yours, with your lovely cures And life is life, I don't know why does it do things like this After all that I've come from, you're the woman I should run from Butterfly, maybe I still have my doubts about you cause Butterfly Cause I can't find nothing bad about you, eh? Butterfly, you mess me up, you make my heart double beat, eh? Butterfly, I don't know how did you got inside of me. go on for 75 or 85 more minutes but I decided to cut it short um so when I was thinking about four track like sometimes I say the word four track and people like who aren't musicians or haven't recorded don't know what that means and so what it means is you can record four instruments total so like I would play the drums then you have the bass guitar and vocals and you can't add anything else other than that on top of that unless they're being played at the exact same time which is you know if it's just me it just means every time you're listening, you're only hearing four things. So if there's a guitar part at the beginning of Butterfly that goes, dun, 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 I have to make sure that ends before the vocal starts. And then the vocal, when it's done, then the guitar, then the electric guitar can come back in. And I was also thinking, people ask me all the time, like, well, how are you recording it? Like, were you, you know, um, I don't know, did you play the guitar first and then play the drums along? And like for Butterfly, I can give you an example because I actually have the drum set behind me that I, I recorded it on. Um, I recorded like I just used a kick drum, a snare, and a and a hi hat for everything with one microphone on it because um, 
I wanted to keep it super simple and not because I'm not a technical engineer. So I would just go in there and I'd just put the microphone on. I just listen in my mind. I'd like hear the song in my head and I'd play along. So I'll play the beginning of Butterfly, how I was hearing it when I, when I recorded it. I've had these drums since I was 15. So I didn't have this, I didn't have this, and I didn't have this. It was just the three. And I'd be like, like that. And then I just sit there and imagine in my mind, in my mind's eye. So you're probably like, how long is he going to do that? How long is he going to do that for? That's how long, not any longer than that. That was enough. So my next song in here is California, which is kind of ended up, the song California, the whole theme of California became sort of the theme of this record. Um, I had been to LA a bunch when I was growing up, but I had never been to Northern California, San Francisco until I was 19. And it totally blew my mind. And um, so a few California songs came out on this record and then ended up being kind of a nice theme through the record, which is also, it's nice to have a place that you love be the theme, which actually when this record started taking off and the crowd started growing, it was nice to be able to go right away to San Francisco to tour and play to a lot of people there, which was, it was a good place to choose. So, anyways, this is a song called California. Don't you know, baby, I'm a leading man I dig down deep when I say I love you And I can hold my own with the best of them I guarantee you, you will never see Nothing like this again California, I hope that it wakes you From all of the darkness I could break through Cause I'm gone Miss you, I'm gonna miss you, I'm gonna miss you, I'm gonna miss you. Don't you know that I did the things I could? I rubbed your back when you were sleeping, and all along, baby, it was understood that you were leaving absolutely since the very first day we met, California. That wakes you from all of the darkness I could break through Cause I'm gonna miss you I'm gonna miss you I'm gonna miss you I'm gonna miss you Like I miss the ocean When I go to sleep Man, it's gonna break my heart Dig down deep when I say I love you And I can hold my own with the best of them I guarantee you, you will never see Nothing like this again California, I hope that it wakes you From all of the darkness I could break through Cause I'm gonna miss you I'm gonna miss you I'm gonna Miss you, I'm gonna miss you like I miss the ocean when I go to sleep. Like I miss the ocean when I go to sleep. Man, it's gonna break my heart.
So that was California. The next song is by far the most polarizing song on this record. Um, it's a song called Godless. And I remember I was working at a, uh, at a restaurant, like I said, in, in Minnesota when, when I finished this record. And I, it was like, at the time, it was just a demo I had. And so some of the waitresses and waiters were nice enough to like buy my demo, which is depressing. Like, and <laughs> it was just like, I feel bad about, anyways, they bought it and they were very kind. And then a couple of days or weeks would go by and the people would come to me and the waitresses would be like, Oh man, I actually weirdly like your record. I really like this. I like that CD. I actually, you know, we, it's weird. I actually listened to it. And I'm like, okay, you know, and then they'd say, you know, I'd never listen to track four though. I always skip track four constantly. That's the one I skip every time. And that people just didn't even think about that. I'd be like, oh yeah, I also, I also made track four. That's also, that's also my song. They're like, yeah, let's skip that crap. So there was that side of the thing. And then also I had like the band Kings of Leon, Caleb Follow Will reach out and say, he listened to that song on repeat, and the Kings of Leon in their rehearsals would do covers of Godless because it was like their favorite song. So like it was very polarizing. Also, when I play it live, sometimes I kick into it and the place would explode. Sometimes I kick into it and you'd see people like leaving right away too. So like sometimes people would be like jumping off the stage in this mosh pits, and other times you see people like with their arms crossed, being like, "What the living hell, dude?" So and so the reason this song is on there in the first place is I had this friend, the same friend, his name is Corbin. He had the he allowed me to be in the basement of his apartment to try recording the same guy. When I finished this CD, I had him over and we sat down and listened to him. We listened to the whole thing and, and he just sat there, you know, kind of like taking it in. And he was like, I like this CD, but the thing is, you sound like a pussy. And I was like, oh, okay. And he's, he's like, and you're not a pussy. So you need to do something different here because the world's going to think you're a pussy because Chris Osgood said, put the true you forward and I was like ah oh, shit so first of all I was just like whatever dude bye so I just tried to blow it off but then I remember laying down that night and then you know what this was just bugging me so then I just wrote the song and then recorded it and um yeah this is a song called Godless <laughs> This is not a conquering, I'm not conquered Even as the helicopters come for me My wife sleeps in her clothes in the corner I'm looking down at the police on the street We all walk on this planet together With the earth below and the sky above Answer me this, would you do the same? If somebody raped the woman you love A cooker killed a man, now I'm on the run A cooker killed a man, now I'm on the run A cooker killed a man, now I'm on the run Godless burning underneath the sun a cooker killed a man, now I'm on the run. A cooker killed a man, now I'm on the run. A cooker killed a man, now I'm on the run. Godless burning underneath the sun. Don't sleep in the light. Let him come, let him come. Don't sleep in the light. Let him come, let him come. Don't sleep in the light. Let him come, let him come. Don't sleep in the light. Let him come. is restored to the record you have the dark and you have the light so and this next song you know continue on that godless is not coming out of nowhere for me because that's the kind of music i listen to a lot you know like when i was in high school i was obsessed with the, the replacements and at a school assembly i played fuck school and got the amp pulled out of the wall by the principal so it's like not it wasn't like a, a uh, weird set of clothes for me at all it's just on this record 
it wasn't being represented. And the next the next song also kind of has, you know, I think it, when I listen back to this record now at 22 or when I, years old when I was recording this, I think my influences are just, you know, like anybody that's that age, like they were just right out there in the open. And, and you know, so I hear definitely stuff with Neil Young and I hear some influences by Dylan or influences by um, Johnny Cash. And on this next song, I definitely hear some Led Zeppelin. And, oh yeah, I was gonna play, show you this too, because I there's a part in the song that I can't usually do if I'm just playing it solo, but there's a part in the song in the middle that goes like. So that's how I did that. And um, yeah, if somebody just tuned in right there. They'd be like, what the fuck is happening? Like, what do we, is this a seance? And it kind of is a seance, I guess. So you, you're in the right place. If, you, if you're looking for a seance, this is a lot better. You did, you did pretty good. You kind of, you found it intuitively. There's a song called Big Sur. Just let the disc play. This is the song to give you hope. I wouldn't have it any other way This is a song to give you hope When you say, honey, I'm afraid to sleep at night, sleep at night Honey, I'm afraid to sleep at night, sleep at night Well, I wish I had my arms around you This is a song to give you hope just let this thing surround you This is a song to give you hope When you say, honey, I'm afraid To sleep at night, sleep at night Honey, I'm afraid to leave tonight Or leave tonight I said, go, go on Go, go on I said, I I love you truly, so go, go on, and get a jump on the finer thing. This is a song to give you hope. You never know what the past will bring you. This is a song to give you hope. When you say, honey, I'm afraid to sleep at night, sleep at night. Honey, I'm afraid to leave tonight, leave tonight. I said, go, go on, go, go on. I said, I, I love you truly, so go, go on. Forty miles south of Monterey in the San Lucia Hills. The sunshine shone me to sleep, and I dreamt I was alive. I sang myself a song, it went, Know what you know. Mm -hmm. Stay when you stay, and go when you go. And I call it intuition Flowers bloom and hummingbirds fly Yes, I call it intuition It gets me by Realizing that our friendship's been broken 
And the funny thing to me is how quickly it slips away and leaves you thinking of the things that were never spoken. And you know loving me is not enough. Sex future does. Sailing on a silver ship out to the open, lonely, and realizing that our friendship's been broken. And the funny thing to me is how quickly it slips away and leaves you longing for the things that were never. Spoken, and you know, loving me is not enough, and I know future is as future does. that's Big Sur. And you'll notice at the end of that song on the recording, there's two guitars playing. So you're going to go, if it's a four track, how are the two acoustic guitars playing? And I was like, well, because the drum kit went away. So there's that geometry of the algebra of that. Well, that was a song like after, I, you know, after, after I made this demo and I was playing these coffee shops, um, I started getting some feedback besides the waitresses I work with and the wait waiters. Um, I got, you know, like there's, there's kids like would come to my show and there's there's one guy who was 17 named Rob Rob Scoro ended up he was opening shows and and I'd play the show and there'd be 20 people there and then Rob Scoro would 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 open for me and there'd be 150 high school kids there at this show and I'd be like whoa okay like and he's like if you want a bass player I'll play bass for you and I was like if you're gonna bring 150 people to the show that sounds fantastic so we became friends and I was you know we started playing together and then he he you know he's a great guy and he invited me over to his house and he still lived with his parents and I remember going to his parents' house, and his parents were really kind to me. And and I remember them saying they really love the song "Big Sur," and and they they and I was like an an adult likes my likes the song. Like why would they ever listen to my my demo CD? And it was just like really moving to me. And um, you know, at the time, like too, I was just getting I was sending them out. So I I finished this demo, and I I was just start to send it to all these labels. And I had this idea like, oh, I was gonna I'm gonna maybe get signed, and and I probably got. 45 rejection letters it was like it was like over and over and over again in the, in the mail i'd be so excited I'd be like oh caroline records or oh reprise records or you know matador records and, and one of them was this i remember it so clear it was so it was so bad it was like sorry it's taking us so long mr jennings to get back to you we made sure everybody in the whole office heard your record and nobody thought it was worth signing and it was stuff like that so i just you know i decided to like get this band together with rob and we got a drummer named Chris, and we started playing these rock shows, or more like rock clubs. And I used this to get us gigs, and um, slowly just started selling them off the off the uh, off the off the stage, really. And it just kind of started taking off. And it was like not, it wasn't even like conscious. I just didn't even think about the idea of selling it myself or putting out a record myself. And it slowly started to take off like that. And this is the first song. And one day I was driving around, and I heard this song come on the radio in Minnesota, and I was like, "Whoa, you got to be kidding me!" Like. Kind of totally blew my mind. It was a song called Carol California Part Two. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lighten up. I'm gonna throw a box of books and my beloved guitar into the back of my truck. Try my luck in California, 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 California. I'm gonna stay away from LA, I'm staying far away from there. I'm going north of San Francisco into the cleaner air. I'm gonna get a little land with the money I've saved. 
buy an old house that I can work on Where the next nearest neighbor lives miles away I'll never have to mow the lawn Right on California 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 When the house is all finished And the garden is grown I'm gonna write you a letter Asking you to come home And I know that you will come Yes, I know that you will come Cause others may know where you've been But honey, I know where you're from You're from California California, California, California. So once I heard that on the radio and once I started selling these demos off of my, um, you know, off the stage that these shows are starting to get, I started to feel like maybe this could be something. And, and um, so I went back to see Chris. Oh, before I felt like it could be something, I went back to see Chris Osgood, this guy who started the whole thing. So I went back a year later with this this demo CD and um, we sat down, put it down in front of him. He's like, all right. So you actually did that. He's like, I thought I was never going to see you again. And I was like, well, here it is. And um, we listened to it, and we got to this next song. It was 1997, and and uh, he he got about halfway through the song, and he like paused it, and he was like he got up and he walked to the door, and he said to his secretary, uh, you know, could you please cancel the rest of my appointments for the rest of the day? Um, thank you very much. And he walked back and he shut the door and he like locked his door and he goes, okay, um, this is some serious stuff here. And I was like, wow, okay. So it was he was incredibly helpful, and he's like, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna call the uh, the um, journalist Jim Walsh and I think he's gonna love this and then if you can get a review it's gonna help you so he got in touch with him and then I went home a couple days later and there's a the blinking light on my answer machine and it was Jim Walsh from the St. Paul Pioneer Press and he was like dude this is Jim Walsh and I love your record and I was like oh okay well I didn't know if you, you know I was so used to everybody rejecting me that it, it just didn't seem like anything was gonna happen but then sure enough he came over to my house he reviewed the record and then Every week for 13 straight weeks, on the front page of the paper in his column, he wrote about me for 13 straight weeks. So I went from being like, couldn't get any gigs, suddenly I was on the cover of these papers, I was on the cover of all these other papers, all the shows were selling out, and it was like incredible turn of events. So I gotta thank Chris Osgood and Jim Walsh for that. And this, this, this is the song that kinda, it made Chris lock the door. So, And I, I was excited about this one because it, I felt like it kinda just landed. Sometimes songs just come in, it kind of connected, it was sort of like, it felt like a, there's a mystical thread through it, and it's, it sort of connects my time in Pittsburgh with my time in Minnesota, and um, also just just like the, the ancient tradition of song, an American song. Uh, people like coming up through Mississippi, John Hurt, all the way through Paul Simon, and then it, it felt like that was kind of all inside this song too, so it's a song called 1997. Southern Minnesota in the year of 1997 There was a great natural light in the sky And people ran in fear And I was so concerned with the welfare of the woman Standing nearest to me That I didn't notice 
So when it shone on both of us, then disappeared. I asked her, do you know what that was? And did it shine for only us? Tell me, do you know what that was? Was it a sign? I think it probably was. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the year of 1987 There was a great natural light in the sky And people ran in fear And I was so concerned with the welfare of my brother Standing nearest to me That I didn't notice when it shone on both of us Then disappeared I asked him, do you know what that was? And did it shine for only us? Tell me, do you know what that was? Was it a sign? I think it probably was. Was it a sign? I think it probably was. So now that I had this recording and this, these CDs that I was manufacturing at this place uh, on right by Midway in St. Paul at this place called like CDs and, I don't know, CDs and Milk or something like some weird backdoor CD place, I needed a cover and I had no idea how to make a cover and it was before like computers or cell phones and stuff. I mean, there was computers, but there was definitely not computers at, at my house. And so a friend of mine from work was like, well, why don't you come? I'm a designer. We'll just we'll, we'll whip out a CD cover quick. So we went in there. I brought a couple pictures and I couldn't decide on anything. And there's, so he's like, he's like moving these pictures around. And, and I remember like my hand was like this and there's this huge blood blister. I think I was like working on something. I slammed, so there's this giant blood blister on my finger. And I was like obsessing about that. I was like, I can't have my hand right there with a giant blood blister. That's disgusting. And he's like, you can't see that dude and so we were like doing that kind of thing also he like moved my head like there's two different pictures together and they moved it and they kind of shrunk my forehead and i was like that's nice so i left my forehead shrunk shrunken minutely in the in the picture because I, I was like it was my first taste of photoshopping and i loved it it was old school photoshopping and then it was like all these different we used like browns and blues and then the covers we were just making them up and then we'd print like i don't know 500 cds and they'd have a brown cover and then i'd take them to this place called the electric fetus and they had a distribution center and they kept calling me like we need 2,000 more i'd be like well, you got to be kidding me and they would send it all these record stores and then they'd be like we need 5,000 more so every time we do another thing another batch i would change the cover of the cd and i'd be like let's do blue this time we, let's do let's do blue and sometimes they come out and the printing would be all weird because it's so homeschool like and, and um, just kept selling more and more of these, and it was very exciting, and it just kind of worked out like that. And some of the earlier batches, I, I put um, put my home address in there and I put my phone number in there too, just because I was like, I just want gigs. I just want, I just want people to want to, you know, like hire the band. And pretty soon that, was, that got kind of crazy. I was getting calls in the night. So, you know, about the fifth pressing, I was like, maybe don't put your phone number in there, or, you're, or you're, you might also want to move. So, so. Uh, that was the first seven songs of the record. This is the final song of the record. Um, I needed a closer, so I had those songs, and I couldn't figure out. I was like, I need to close with something, and then I also wanted to... I had Butterfly at the very beginning that had an electric guitar part. It was actually this guitar, but through an amp. It sounded distorted. So I, I wrote the song Darkness Between the Fireflies, and then I was like, I need a solo. So there's a solo on there by me that I, I went and snuck into my roommate's room and took his electric guitar and just played the solo on it. It's, it's kind of like one of my only solos on a recording too, because I think partly just because I don't know why it's my, well, one of the reasons it's the only solo is because right after that, maybe a year or two after that, I broke my finger playing basketball, this one. So like 
I kind of had to simplify it. I would be on stage trying to do something tricky, and then all of a sudden this finger would just like stick straight out. And um, so that kind of simplified my guitar playing a lot. And um, so, you know, playing simplified. Oh, that brings me also, um, you know, I got a, I'm in a new band where I'm not playing guitar at all because Pinky just lead the way. And so I wanted, if, if you haven't heard already, I'm in a new band called Painted Shield with Stone Gossard from Pearl Jam, Matt Chamberlain on drums, Brittany Davis on keys and bass. And our, our debut record, also a self-titled, Painted Shield, Painted Shield, is coming out on Friday. So keep an eye out for that. It's going to be streaming. We already have some videos up. We have a YouTube channel. You can listen to that. So. And I really appreciate you all listening tonight, and I'm, I'm glad you joined me. And uh, it's been super fun, like just thinking about this stuff this week when I was kind of preparing, thinking about what I would want to talk about. And it's just it, it's really cool that you all um, – care and 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 want to support me and the music and also i wanted to make it make sure it was free for everybody but i also um wanted to say like like you all know musicians um most of their income is through mine especially is through touring and touring is gone for as long as i can see out into the future so um donations would be appreciated i have a venmo up um but don't feel obligated to do that by any means but it's always appreciated also i have paintings for some of them behind me as a etsy page too i've been doing that and um also we should probably have a, a new handwritten lyric sheet up this week too so you can keep an eye out on our crystal chariot website for for a new lyric print um and again, thank you so much for listening. This last song, um, Darkness Between the Fireflies, I kind of think this song, like sometimes I'll be in a situation where people would say like, can you play me one song? And what would be like your kind of like central sound or c central style? And um, I don't know what, what I would play now, but like in the past, this is a song I would, I, would, I would sort of play just to be like, this is kind of like central of like my sound. And like, you know, for instance, I was, I was at a friend's house um, and this, this, the singer Donovan was there, the, the folk singer, and he was playing songs on the couch, and we, we ended up on the couch together playing. Well, he was playing, and I was listening, and I was so stoked, because, you know, Hurdy Gurdy Man is like, it's like my favorite. And so he's playing his songs, and he's showing me how to play Hurdy Gurdy Man, and then he, like, kicks his shoes off and puts his, gets his socks, and he, like, cuddles up, and he hands me his guitar, and he's, like, laying beside me, like, he's like, play me one of your songs. So I played him Darkness Between the Fireflies, and... He just listened at the very end, and I was just like, and then he started laughing, and I was like, and he's like, oh my God, that, that sounded like it was going backwards the whole time. That song sounds like it was written backwards. And I was like, what the fuck is that supposed to, like, I was like, okay, like, I, I love that, but I, I, okay. So this song is, sounds like it's written backwards, which also reminds me of another story about L.A., because I've played the Troubadour over the last, this is a good way to wrap this all up. California record. Troubadour is like the quintessential club in, in L.A., and I've been playing there for over 20 years. And, and this last year, uh, Josie and I were hanging out with the doorman who has been there for forever. And it was late at night, and I was like, hey, you know what? Like, what's the craziest thing you've ever seen? You're, you've been working the door of the Troubadour for like over 20 years at least. And what's the craziest thing you've ever seen? And I'm expecting like, because this is the place that John Lennon got kicked out of for heckling the Smothers Brothers. And I'm like, what's, the, what's he going to say? Is it going to be Axl Rose? Or is it going to be like, and he goes, oh, that's easy. One time, these two guys came to the door, two guys, both of them, feet backwards, feet backwards. So that's the craziest thing the guy at the Troubadour has ever seen. And with that, a song that sounds backwards. Dark between the fireflies. I woke up before you in the total darkness. Early morning, I could hear the wind in the trees. And I was looking for the light to bring you out from the shadows, redefine you now for oh, only me. And honey, I'm sure. You've been in love before And plenty of men Have held high places In your eyes Jealousy Has got no use for me The past is beautiful Like the darkness Between the fireflies And I was driving faster Through the Appalachians I could see Go out below me in 
the sun You should know by now Someone's always been there Long before you You're never gonna be The only one And honey, I'm sure That you've been in love before And plenty of men Have held high places In your eyes Jealousy has got no use for me The past is beautiful like the darkness between the fireflies Beautiful like the darkness between the fireflies Thank you so much for listening from me and Josie from our house to yours, wishing you love and health and healing in this hard, hard time. Good night.